So it was during our first prayer line service and I'm standing there and people are screaming and writhing and the pastors are casting out demons in the name of Jesus and me, a former good Mormon boy, former member of the LDS church, I'm looking around, I'm thinking, how did I get here? Well, the truth is we got here through the tender, loving hand of Jesus who brought us out of that religion and into a relationship with him. And his gentle hand has moved us all the way through salvation into deliverance because he came to set the captives free. My name is Chris. And I'm Michelle. And we're here to tell you about our testimony. Uh, I think the year was 2011 and we were outside of the LDS temple all dressed in our beautiful white clothes and we had just gone through the sealing ceremony to get our family connected and we were at the top of you know, Mormonism, basically, of the LDS Church. We had our, our ticket punch there. We were in a wonderful spot. We were riding high, uh, but then things changed for us. I was reading the New Testament. It was at the kitchen table, and I was reading John chapter three. And this is where Nicodemus comes to Jesus and says, essentially, what does it take to be saved? And Jesus says, you're a teacher and you don't know? And I just had this moment of like, what are we doing here? Why are we going through all these steps? Why are we going through all these rules? And it just started kind of bringing up this question mark in my mind of what are we doing? What is this all about? I had never really questioned the theology of the Mormon church before. I'd, I'd been a member all my life and uh, I'd been active and inactive. And even when I was inactive, I hadn't Really, I always thought it was true, I just wasn't living according to the standards of the LDS Church. And we were off and running into Christianity. We had lost our religion, but we had found a relationship with Jesus. And that was even more powerful, even more important. We didn't have a church to go to, we didn't have a sister, we had no idea how to Christian. And what was next for us was Jesus. And so that's, we launched right into uh, Christianity, we were, we were born again. It's not very common that happens. So for me, it planted a seed in my heart to look to God's Word differently. Um, I started to question, and so that was how God's Word started to work in my heart, but I was still very, very scared when Christopher asked questions. In fact, I thought that it was probably gonna lead to divorce. I was so scared. I had seen it firsthand in other people in, in our ward that that probably would end our marriage. That was just the gut feeling that I had, the fear that I had. So what would happen for me is that I, I would go from just your normal feeling, like just relaxed and calm and peaceful and just your day to day how you are, I would go immediately into a panic mode. I would feel like I got punched in the stomach. I, if I was alone, I would just drop to the floor um, and just in fear. This kind of gut feeling, this feeling of fear wasn't only that fear of losing my marriage, but I felt it in general uh, about the health of my, my family where I, I would go to the deepest fear of losing him. And these types of things wouldn't just fixate my fear mentally, but I started to have physical sensations associated with them, um, prickling pain that would move. There was a time when all one side of my face, I had the sensations. Um, the most recent time uh, was on my back. So after that experience, it was very clear that there was something spiritual going on and that it was real and that it wasn't something that we were gonna be able to handle on our own. And so we started looking at deliverance as an option. I have this student who for months has been going on and on and on about Hungry Gen. And so I asked Christopher when he got home, I said, do you wanna to go to Hungry Gen on Sunday? And so he was like, of course. And that Sunday came and here we are in Hungry Gen and I just was like, this it feels different than anything I've experienced before. We, we went and, and we were among the first people to be prayed for. And as he prayed over me, 
I remember hearing him renouncing things and breaking um, curses and, and saying things, but at the same time, my body started to contort and to twist. And I remember him telling me to relax. And I thought, how am I gonna relax? Um, but I, you know, I tried to. When Pastor Vlad said for that to come off of my back, I, I, f I had been feeling, prior to him saying that, I had been feeling intense feelings all through the middle part of my body. And then I felt this strong urge to just, to just like shake things off my hands. And I was twisting, as I said, I was bent over. And I remember just stomping my feet, just stomping my feet. It was like, just release, get out, get, you know, that, that feeling, like the muscles just, Tell, I, it was like my body was on its own, just shaking something off. And I had a very powerful deliverance experience. Um, one that surprised me, I, I was aware the entire time of what was happening, but I had prayed to, if there was anything left there, Lord, to just, I, I wanna let anything go. I am not holding on to anything, including my dignity. Afterward, I felt relief. Afterward, I felt gratitude. And it was after that that I told Christopher. I, I knew that, that he had a number for a doctor. And I said, I need you to make that doctor's appointment for us. And so that was a huge step. We did make that doctor's appointment. We did go to that doctor's appointment. She was calm and collected throughout. There was no hiding under the blanket and crying or crumpling in the uh, closet and having breakdowns. I mean, she was, she was totally there. And she went and got her blood work done, which is, you know, amazing. And uh, we're, we're kind of back to normal. We're back to where we can talk about medical things again. The kids don't have to hide their medical stuff. We can actually make some jokes about medical things, which before that was, there's no way. So yeah, it, this has been absolutely transformational. After that last deliverance experience, it wasn't as though there were never thoughts, but it was like they were over here somewhere outside of me. And I even one time, Sophia, my daughter, was complaining about her head hurting or whatever. And there was the thought kind of bubbling around and I, I literally just yelled and said, no, out in Jesus' name, that is not my portion. That is not my thought. And I scared her a little bit, then she was like clapping for me. She's like, all right, mom, you know? Um, and as, as, as things would happen, like I can pray for people now. I can pray for their healing and it, nothing, none of it upsets me. So I would just want to say to anybody that is struggling with fear in any form, you don't have to do it all yourself. It's not about you figuring out how to get from step one to step ten. It's moving in the direction of God and He will do it for you. And I just want to say something for the families out there. You know, so often when people have these big religious changes or spiritual changes, they can fall into agnosticism or atheism. Uh, but Jesus doesn't want that. He wants you to find him. He's out there. And you don't have to go through that, that trauma alone, that Jesus is there for you. And just because something else got it wrong doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't have it right. So uh, I know that there's hurt. I know that there's a sense of betrayal. I know that there's a sense of pain, but move towards Jesus because there was something in there that was right. And that something in there is Jesus. So go to the Bible, learn of Him, get to know who He is, develop a relationship with Him because that's more important than any religion you could ever have. My name is Chris. And I'm Michelle. And this is our testimony.